Hello, Tennessee Voices viewers. This is David Plazas, the Opinion and Engagement Director for the USA Today Network Tennessee and the Tennessean. I'm excited to have today as our guest, Dr. Shauna Jackson, President of Nashville State Community College. Uh, how are you doing today, Dr. Jackson? I'm doing well. Looking forward to talking to you. No, I've been looking forward to this conversation because um, your institution has played an even more critical role in the last few years of helping um, uh, students connect with higher education. As we've talked about issues like the Tennessee Promise uh, and also um, uh, Nashville's efforts to help supply some of the, uh, the supply costs and other things like that, uh, your institution has become even more important than ever. And um, if I recall correctly, you're located on uh, uh, White's Bridge and then also in Antioch at, uh, uh, near the Library and Community Center, correct? You know, we actually have six campuses, oh, and three okay. in Nashville. So Nashville State actually serves seven counties. And so we have a campus at the White Ridge Road, which you referenced. We have a campus in Antioch at the former Hickory Hollow Mall. But we, in 2017, opened a campus up in East Donaldson, mm -hmm. not too far from the airport. And actually, I need to mention, we're building one in Madison wow. uh, that we are uh, working on. And it may be available uh, for the public in fall of 2021. But we also have a campus in Clarksville, one in Dixon and one in Waverly, which is Humphreys County. Well, very good. I've seen you speak in the past uh, very passionately about um, disparities in higher education and also the issue of graduation rate. And, and we know that there's a disparity if you have um, uh, socioeconomic uh, factors where you're lower income. We, we see uh, communities of color that are, are also uh, negatively affected in this case. Would you speak a little bit about that and how Nashville State is trying to fill that gap? Oh, absolutely. And of course, I do want to say that I actually came to Tennessee to work for the Pillsbury Company many years ago and stumbled into higher education. So it wasn't my first career. And what was life changing for me was being a part time instructor and getting in the classroom. And that's where the disparities and the issues with equity were just directly in my face that there are students who don't have the support of family and friends to continue their education. And then the barriers to stay and actually complete their education were things like, I wouldn't have imagined, food, transportation, childcare, housing. And so I've been in the community college system since 2000, uh, but Nashville State's my first urban institution. And you can really see the magnitude of how all those disparities come into play for students who either don't consider accessing higher education or those that come face those same barriers, childcare, transportation, food insecurities. And so it was very um, personal to me uh, to make sure that Nashville State started reimagining how we served our students and that it wasn't just about the academic experience, but it was also about supporting the student. And so we have done some amazing things. I haven't quite hit two years yet, that'll be in June, um, to open up things like food pantries, to create success centers. And uh, we were so thankful last year to have Nashville grad funded because it became a way to really figure out what students need and then build the holistic supports around them. And, and that's a very interesting program, Nashville Grad, that helps supplement some of those financial needs that students have. Right, it was uh, started in the Briley administration and Mayor Cooper um, was, was one of the programs he wanted to continue uh, forward. So that, that, that's uh, great that there's that uh, uh, agreement on the importance of higher education and training because some of the things that I know that, that there's been a big conversation in Nashville and across Tennessee is workforce preparation. You know, are we prepared for the jobs that are coming in, Amazon, Alliance Bernstein, uh, uh, many others that are that are coming in or have been here, um, you know, obviously near near your campus, uh, you know, Bridgestone, and you know, um, how are you helping prepare these students for the opportunities that lie ahead? I think one of the wonderful things about Nashville State that even as I was preparing to come here, I didn't realize was how amazing uh, the programs, the academic programs, are at Nashville State. We have such a variety. We have technical certificates that you can complete in one or two semesters. Uh, we also have associate degrees that really prepare you to go right to work. And then I would say the bulk of our students are those that take their first two years and transfer to uh, a university. But because of uh, the work that Nashville State has done over its history, 
uh, it was birthed as a state technical institute to really meet workforce needs. We didn't become a community college until 2002. So we have strong relationships with our area employers. Because to me, I have two goals, student success and workforce development. And a piece of workforce development is not just I'm producing graduates, but I'm producing graduates in which employers need to hire and that they're at a very high level. So I can't do that in isolation. Faculty can't do that in isolation. We have wonderful advisory boards where we have members of who you were talking about, Bridgestone, and we are trying to recruit advisors for some of the other companies that sit down and talk to us and look at our curriculum and look at our programs. And they say to us, you need to add this or make changes. Mm -hmm. And I will say we have some really wonderful partnerships. Mm -hmm. There's one that we recently started last summer um, with Tractor Supply, where we um, had a relationship I did when I came here with the CIO. And of course, IT talent, IT pipeline, that is something I think in Nashville, uh, is not solved, may not be solved uh, soon, but instead of requiring students to go to them, we brought the jobs to us. So we actually turned one of our classrooms into a tractor supply office wow. space. And they bring uh, a, a person here to work directly with students. So they're hired to do real work. And I think that's the model that I'm so interested in continuing to explore, the apprenticeships, the learn and earn, because I can give you credentials, mm -hmm. but if you don't have experience and you go on the job market, the people that have the experience are going to be selected over you. So we want our students not to only have that credential in their hand, but real work experience so that they are more than prepared to take on the challenges ahead. Now, we, we know everybody's been affected by uh, the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, and uh, being in Nashville, we have a stay-at-home order. Uh, institutions have, have, have had to close. How have you uh, been able to contend with this with your, work, your workforce and your students, and what plans do you have for the summer? So I will tell you, it hadn't been easy. And it's been a very challenging time for us. Um, we had the March 3rd tornadoes, which impacted um, students and our faculty and staff, and then quickly after we start seeing more and more cases of COVID-19. And so as we knew it was time to make the transition from on ground to online, uh, it happened really within a week's time. We extended spring break for students and had faculty back on campus. And so that was a heavy lift. It was a very heavy lift. And not just for students, but for faculty as well. If you had your plans to teach an on-ground course in culinary, and now you have to transition it to online, that is not something you want to do in one or two days. So we were able, in my mind, to transition technology-wise five years in about two weeks. Wow. Um, and we have done that. And so I think the positive things that have come out of this is that faculty are more engaged with their students I've heard several that I've talked to say, I'm going to be a better teacher because of this, because they learn new tools using technology on how to better interact with students. And so there has been, again, a real need to switch our resource focus for students, where we would have open computer labs. How do we get students' devices quickly? And I will bring up Nashville grad again. There are students in that program. We were able to help them but we also have helping hands through our college foundation. And we were able to work with a couple of partners. And one was the Tennessee College Access and Success Network mm -hmm. to help us quickly get devices direct ship to students. And so we were able to get uh, hot spots for students. I think, uh, you know, when you think about equity, you, you don't really realize until, again, you see it that you can't assume everybody has a computer at home. And if they do have a device, they've been using the college for network and, and Wi-Fi. And so we were getting hotspots to students. And I'm sure you're aware that even, not, not just in Nashville, but in some of the rural communities, even with the hotspot, they can't access um, Wi-Fi. It's just not strong enough. So those have been challenges that we've had to overcome. Um, the decision about commencement and what mm -hmm. to do about summer. And so we will be fully online this summer. We made that decision. We let students know that early. Fall, I'm holding out hope, David. I'm mm -hmm. holding out hope. 
uh, that we can have some semblance of normal and bring students back to campus. But COVID-19, as you think about the numbers and the cases and all the things that we worry about, had some good results for Nashville State. We were able to do some things quickly and to provide additional services to students. And I'm proud of the work that we've done. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I want to switch subjects for a moment to ask you about you. How are you finding self-care and coping during this time of COVID-19? I know as a college president, um, all these decisions weigh heavily on you, but what are some ways that you've been able to, to disengage at times so to re-energize yourself? Well, I'll personally share, I have a high school senior um, and my daughter who's in graduate school, she's still in California. But one of the really nice things is that very first week I was home before dark, which is unusual. <laughs> And he didn't have any sports things. And so we started going walking in the afternoons. And it has been a wonderful time with my son, um, my husband too, I'll count him in there. But <laughs> I, I hadn't had that time with my son. And knowing that this is his senior year, uh, we've been spending a lot of time together. So we've been walking as a family and exercising as a family. And it's still hard to shut it off because even though you're home, you're still busy back-to-back -back meetings. I've never had so many uh, Zoom meetings where when you're on campus or at work, you're getting up and you're walking and you're going to another building or you're going and traveling to an event. That part has made you so sitting in a chair all day that I'm really enjoying when the weather is good, <laughs> getting out and walking with my son. Well, let me ask you, as a, as a parent, it must be difficult for children, especially for teenagers, to deal with an era where they can't be with their friends, where uh, social <laughs> events are gone, where graduation in the traditional sense is not going to happen. Um, how have those conversations gone? You know, I, I have an easygoing kid. So that's one thing. My son, um, yes, you missed prom. And he was okay with that. I think I'm more um, sad about potentially missing graduation than he is. Um, but it has been difficult for him to make the switch to online too. And so I see my students through him mm -hmm. that this format of learning works really well for some people, but he's struggling. Uh, this is not the type of learning environment that he would prefer. And so just trying to help keep him focused and counting down the weeks until he is completed um, what he has to do for school but he's missed, you know, several key senior events um, that we have just said, you know what, there's nothing we can do about it. We're going to make the best of each day and just be grateful that we have this time together. Something you mentioned is, is really intriguing to me, which is, you know, how do you prepare students this day and age to be digital learners? Um, you know, what are, some of the, what are some of the things that you've learned uh, from your own personal experiences, but also from your campus experiences that tell you this is, these are other schools, whether it's soft or hard skills that students need in order to be successful in an online environment? Well, we are still developing some of those tools. And I think what's hard about this transition is uh, whether you know it or not, we, we have a heavy adult population. Mm -hmm. And the Tennessee Reconnect has been very beneficial and we sure hope that people will take advantage of it even during this time. But we have found that those adult students are really challenged technically um, mm -hmm. to use uh, a, a computer and a device. And so we have a Reconnect Cafe here where we had a person that would literally say, this is a mouse, this is how you click, this is how you go into your course shell. This is how you add a document. And so not having that person, what we've started doing is to create videos so that students can watch them and they mm -hmm. can learn from them because we don't have that one-on-one -on -one contact, which works the best to just sit down with people uh, to do that. But I will say that has been a challenge for the college, even when we were on ground and then quickly move into this online environment. Uh, we're hoping videos, and then we have a lot of people who are manning phones now that wouldn't have before because they would have been face-to-face -face with students. Mm -hmm. We've been calling students, probably more than they've ever, probably they mm -hmm. probably are sick of us calling them, but we are just checking on them. One, um, you know, just the mental health that, that is this transition and this time is having on students, but then also to say, how can we help you? And at that moment, if we can say, okay, are you sitting at your device? Let me help you navigate through the system because they didn't have a lot of time to get ready for this. 
And we just want to make sure that they know that we are here and we care and we want to do our best to support them. And for Tennessee, for viewers who are not familiar with the Tennessee Promise or Tennessee Reconnect, could you uh, give us a summary of what that is? Absolutely. So the Tennessee Promise came in 2015 under Governor Haslam. Both programs did. And it is for any Tennessee high school senior that meets the requirements. They can go to a community college or a technical college, uh, tuition and fee free. The Tennessee Reconnect is the same for adults. They have a little slightly different rules. For instance, Tennessee Promise students must be full time, which is 12 hours or about four classes, where Tennessee Reconnect students can be part time and take two classes. Mm -hmm. I will say we've been very fortunate uh, that they are working with all of the institutions to somewhat modify rules just for COVID-19. And there have been instances where they are gonna work with students who otherwise uh, would be ineligible because perhaps they just could not participate online and they had to drop below their hours. We're giving them grace because this is an unusual time. But those two programs really separated Tennessee from a lot of states. Uh, Many are starting to catch up with these last dollar scholarship programs. But I'm really proud of the fact that Governor Haslam and of course Governor Lee supported uh, the Tennessee Promise and Reconnect programs because it gives people an opportunity uh, to really come back to school. And one of the things that I, I want to reinforce again about Nashville grad is that there are costs to education beyond tuition and fees, mm-hmm. textbooks, again, transportation, basic things that we have other people and other programs to help with. And so, um, you know, you think about the cost of education in Tennessee, that's not a question if you're looking at a community college. So it's so affordable, very affordable. And with the tuition uh, programs through Tennessee Promise and Tennessee Reconnect, um, literally your tuition and fee free. You know, historically, um, my, my dad, I'm not sure if I've, I've mentioned this to you, my dad was a college president years ago, and he would tell me that um, uh, his, in Chicago, he's, that historically, when you had economic downturns, you'd see more students come in to whether update skills or get skills they didn't have. Are you preparing or foreseeing a major influx of students in, onto your campus because of the current economic situation? So we are actually budgeting for a decrease just to make sure that we have the operating dollars to do what we need to do to support students. In a traditional economic downturn, you're absolutely right. We saw it in 08, 09. You know, there was an increase in enrollments for community colleges in Tennessee. This feels different. This COVID-19 situation feels different. And one of the reasons is the uncertainty if we're going to be on ground or online. Um, Many of our continuing students have not registered for fall because they're waiting for a final decision to be made because, again, they want the on-ground and in many of our technical programs, hands-on experience. So we we are being conservative in our approach because we want to be very careful with our state dollars not to overestimate an increase. And so we're actually taking the, the, uh, you know, the reverse approach, hoping that we will see um, a very significant increase, but we have not seen it yet. Uh, Mm -hmm. We have not seen that in our fall enrollment numbers because our traditional methods of recruiting, just think about high school, uh, all that went away. We weren't able to be in the schools. We weren't able to meet with the counselors Mm -hmm. in a very, very significant period of time because March is a prime time for us. But I think we're doing um, a really good job working with partners. Uh, The chamber has been very supportive. Uh, The Tennessee Reconnect communities, um, we are getting words out to people. But the traditional student, uh, we're trying to figure out how to get in front of them through social media, um, through the opportunity like this to say, uh, Nashville State is a really great option. Uh, and it's a really good start for people that that do have the goal of going to a four-year institution because we're going to well prepare you uh, to step into whatever next step you want. And so um, I would just say for us, uh, we think at this point in time, a more conservative approach, hoping that we will see the boom, but just understanding this is not a normal economic downturn. And if people want to learn more about Nashville State, um, what's the website? 
www.nscc.edu. Well, thank you, Dr. Jackson. And for those viewers, this is a, you're watching Tennessee Voices uh, video cast here on Tennessean.com. You can watch this and other episodes on Tennessean.com slash opinion. My guest today is Dr. Shauna Jackson, president of Nashville State Community College. In the last couple of minutes we have, Dr. Jackson, would you leave us with some words of wisdom or tips to help people cope through this really difficult time? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is that I believe education is that first strong ladder to social and economic mobility. So if folks are finding themselves unemployed or unsure about their futures, and they want to make sure uh, that they have the skills and the education for whatever this next new world will be, uh, Nashville State is an option they should consider. I will also say, I feel very strongly, we're gonna get through this. Uh, we often hear Nashville strong. We are Nashville state strong. This state, this community, Middle Tennessee, is going to recover. We will never be the same, and that's okay. We're going to be better because we have pulled through something uh, that was a global issue, and we are going to reimagine ourselves, and we are going to recover, and I believe education is a key to making sure that we have the skills and the talent that we need for the jobs that are that are coming back and the ones that are already here. Dr. Jackson, thank you so much. I hope you stay healthy and well, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, David.